What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a Tri Brigade deck profile. But it's not just going to be any Tri Brigade deck profile. This is a Tri Brigade stun build. You guys will see what I mean when we get into the deck profile. But if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. Now it hasn't been too long since I did my last Tri Brigade video. However, I went to a regional and saw someone top with Tri Brigade and I looked at their list and I was really inspired by it. So I think this list is very, very powerful. Remember this week is five days, five deck profiles. I hope you guys enjoy it with that onto the deck profile. So just before we get started into the profile here, I will say this is not your traditional build of Tri Brigade. There are some techie cards in here, but some cards that make a lot of sense. And when they go off, they go off. So this deck is definitely a little bit different than your average everyday Tri Brigade deck profile. However, it's still just as powerful, if not more powerful. All right. So we're going to start off, of course, with three Rescue Cat. I don't think this is going to be changed. I know some people are on two now. I really like three Rescue Cat still. If this gets hand trapped, it gets hand trapped. Yeah, but this is still your most important normal summon. And this by itself gets you into like full combos right so this is very very important then we're playing triple fractal of course triple kit triple nerval as well as double Kara. so that's it for the tri brigade monster engine and i'm going to go into the tri brigade engine totally like overall right now i'm going to be breaking this deck profile up into engines because it's going to make a lot more sense when i do so obviously you're going to play these ratios i think these are the best ratios i think these have been the best ratios for a very long time i don't think anyone's going to argue these two Keras is very important right now because you have multiple cards to pitch off of the Keras. there's cards that are going to get you actual more advantage when you pitch it off the Keras, which you guys will see in a bit and then of course nerval kit and fractal have to be three ofs in the deck so then the one tri brigade tech card that i was talking about that comes up in a lot of situations is two tri brigade airborne assault right so this card is insane so for anyone who doesn't know what this card does i know it's kind of one of those cards that you don't see played very often but there's a lot of practicality with this card so you target a beast beast warrior or wing beast monster control you summon a beast beast warrior or wing beast from your deck in defense position with a different type and attack less than or equal to that monster so this is going to get you a second body on the board it's an extender for you but the more important thing about this card is it summons another card that i'm about to show you guys that becomes very very powerful so this card lets you play through hand traps which is really really nice it also lets you extend if you need to and it lets you get a stun card because this is at the end of the day a more of a stun build of tri brigade so it does let you get to one of those stun cards that helps you win games right so we're playing two airborne assault and then we're playing two tri brigade revolt okay so that's it for the tri brigade lineup we're playing two revolt here not three the reason you don't want to play three is because you guys will see when we get through the rest of the deck but opening this without a setup doesn't really do anything for you unfortunately i know it's really really good to draw don't get me wrong but it's always searchable in your combo so that's that's why you want to play two revolts still because drawing it is still good don't get me wrong we're also playing desires and so banishing the one can be kind of tough sometimes so you want to play the second for desires and then for two cards here that are not technically tri brigade cards but i'm going to include them in this little engine over here that is one fabled cerebral and this card also i probably just butchered that name but this card is insanely powerful it makes your herald in this deck it gives you another form of an omni negate it's also really good because remember how i said with Karis, now you get kind of an extender this card is actually really good to draw you don't want to necessarily draw it but it's not bad to draw because if it's discarded to the graveyard you get to special summon it and it's a level two beast for you and it's also a tuner so it gives you access to herald of the arc light it also gives you access to rank twos so this card is insanely powerful you do want to be playing this card i think it's nuts and then the one card that i got hit on me multiple times and i was like wait this is just so genius and this is a card that makes airborne assault really powerful is your barrier statue of storm winds you are going to be able to stun your opponent out with a barrier statue through hand traps through whatever you, your opponent throws at you because at the end of the day if you have a monster on your side of the field with an airborne assault you can just go activate airborne assault at any point on your turn and summon the barrier statue of storm winds and so that this card is great because yes on the turn you use this card to summon the monster its effects are negated however that's why you want to be summoning the barrier statue on your turn and then this way when it goes to your opponent's turn the effects are not negated anymore and now you're stun locking your opponent so this card is nuts you really really want to be playing this card then for the hand trap lineup, I think this is going to be a little bit more explanatory, like self-explanatory than the Tri Brigade lineup. So I won't have to explain this too much, but you're playing three Ash, three Imperm, and two DD Crow. Now DD Crow, I don't think is the best hand trap in the format right now. It's it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's still good into a lot of matchups. But the reason I really like DD Crow in this deck is because it's a wing beast. So it gives you targets in your graveyard for your Tri effects. It gives you a card that you can pitch off of Keras if you need. So I think these are just the best ratios for the deck. I, I wouldn't change these. I wanted to play nine, but I wanted to keep it 40 on the dot. This deck is 40 cards on the dot, by the way. If you wanted to make it 41 you can play a ninth hand trap which is either another dd crow or you can play a veiler in here as well if you wanted to but yeah i wanted to try to keep it at 40 which is why i'm playing these ratios and they've been working perfectly fine for me 
Moving on to the spell cards here, we're playing very minimal spells. We're just playing the spells that you need to play, and that is double tanky. Of course, tanky searches your fractals here, which is really important, so you want to be playing this. Double desires, this is one of the reasons we're playing double revolt, because you don't want to banish your revolt off of desires, and then you're kind of in a sticky situation. So you double desires, of course, this card's still nuts. One call by the grave, this card's very important, as well as one foolish burial. So it's a very small spell lineup, but it's just a bunch of power spells that get you to what you need, and that's really all you need in this deck. Then moving on to the trap cards, we're playing a decent amount of traps, so that's because this is a stun variant of Tri Brigade, so we're playing Triple Solemn Strike. Solemn Strike is just so powerful, this format. I don't know, people are not on this card, but this card is nuts. You have to be playing this card if you're playing a stun deck. And this card is really, really good going first and going second, so you have to be playing Solemn Strike in my opinion. And the one card that I chose to play here is three Anti-Spell Fragrance in the main deck. This card is nuts against so many decks. It's against pretty much everything in the meta this card is relevant against. And I've noticed that like when I was playing other decks, you would always want to side anti-spell in and i'm sure if you guys have played competitive recently then you would know that anti-spell is very very staple in the side deck right now and the reason it's staple in the side deck is because not a lot of decks can afford to main deck this however this is a very unique case where tri brigade you're playing such a low spell card count that it doesn't really matter if you have anti-spell because you want to go first anyways so you're going to try to get you through your spells as fast as possible before you flip your anti-spell but regardless this card is nuts and i think you have to be playing this card in today's format and the fact that this deck can main deck it without a lot of consequence is very very powerful it caught a lot of people off guard but it's just so so powerful in the main deck so moving into the extra deck here, we're going to be playing a very standard, I guess, Tri Brigade extra deck. However, this is the main change that I'm making with the deck that I've found is very, very important. And that is playing triple Shureg. The reason this is really important is because in your first turn combo, you're always going to be using one of them. And because this is more of a stun control version of the deck, even though it has the capability to OTK, don't get me wrong, it can still OTK very easily. I mean, we all know how easy this deck can make access code and Shureg and just OTK your opponent. However, because in your first turn combo, you're always going to be using one of them, you do want to have at least two just so you have a little more of a grind game especially because this is more of a stun deck so i've been loving three of these i, I really like this i think you should be playing three in this version of the deck then we're playing two farajit one bear brum as well as one rugo i think these are just standard ratios this is really all you need farajit is really really good of course it's your first turn combo starter it can also go into your second turn where this can help you push for otk as well bear brum of course searches your revolt and then the one rugo as a link three that can come up it's very very important so this is really good and then we're playing one double dragon lords this cards nuts in your first turn combo essentially ideally you want to end on an apollo plus a double dragon lords plus a revolt set ideally and then if you get to your cerebro then you end on a herald of arc light as well so you're always going to be ending on three to four in the gate slash disruptions so double dragon lords is really important one doom eagle this card is nuts as well this card when you're making access code is nuts because you make this card you banish a card your opponent controls sometimes you can sit on this card it's funny because i've sat on this card before because it's a quick effect dd crow essentially right so it's really really powerful then one all mirage one all mirage is really important because this is how you get your kit in the graveyard if you if that's your only normal summon same thing with your nerval this is very important to be playing this card then we're playing one apollo and one axis code that's it for the link monsters okay a apollo and axis code should be self-explanatory but i do want to say this a lot of people are going to probably comment on this and be like why aren't you playing win the wind charmer right because you are playing barrier statue and honestly barrier statue can lock you out of your own extra deck a lot of the time but in this deck it doesn't matter as much for a couple reasons one your apollo is a wind so if you're making barrier statue anyways you can still go into something like apollo but also the only time you're only really making barrier statue is like when you have a situation when you can't make anything else and or you make barrier statue after you've done everything you already wanted to do and then put a barrier statue on top of everything so it's not one of the things where you're just summoning a barrier statue and then trying to play around your own barrier statue right the second thing is doom eagle and double dragon lords are also both wind monsters and this is very important because you can still summon the doom eagle with barrier statue on the board however the more important thing is with double dragon lords if you have to out your own barrier statue you can go into double dragon lords use its effect to send the barrier statue and a card your opponent controls and then you can continue going so i never really missed win i understand why win is important but i never really missed it in this deck because it's not going to be one of those things where barrier statue is locking you out of your own extra deck right there's never going to be that situation and honestly a lot of the time the barrier statue is not going to stay on the board for that long your opponent is always going to have an out to barrier statue however it's one of those things that it forces your opponent to out it before they out any of the, of the rest of your board right so that's why i think this extra deck and these link monsters are fine i don't think you need win if you wanted to play win you could cut a shureg for it i guess theoretically but i really like three shureg so yeah you don't need win and then we're playing sky calvary centuria as well as zeus 
because uh, this is really easy to make with your Cerebral now, with your Rescue Cat into like Kit and Keras, very easy to make. Actually, there's another card here. I think it's called Joyous Melfi's. It's another rank two monster that you can make. You don't have to be playing Centuria. I just don't have the Joyous Melfi's card, so you guys can play this. But any pretty much rank two monster that can attack your opponent without any consequences, Joyous Melfi's can attack directly. So that card might be here as well. But either Centuria or Joyous Melfi's, either one, because then you have Zeus access afterwards, which is very, very important. And then lastly, we are playing one Herald of the Arclight for the combo because you're going to always want to be ending on this with your Cerebral. So this is your extra deck. I think this is a perfect extra deck. The only thing, again, if you wanted to try the win, you can try the win cut the shoe but i will say that you're never gonna end up needing the win and win is just not that great this format because you're not taking anything from your opponent's graveyard that's really wind in today's format so i don't think win is that great but uh yeah i think this extra deck has been working perfectly well for me so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy like the thing that i said earlier was that this deck is not your standard or typical tri brigade list however it is very powerful in today's format the things it does and the decks that it counters is very very relevant so i think this is a really cool way to play tri brigade and i definitely think you guys should try it out for yourselves so if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh videos deck profiles just like this one combo videos etc etc but the rest of this week is going to be all deck profiles the last few days next few days all deck profiles so i hope you guys enjoy and with that spanko signing out peace